Rifleman's effectiveness depends to a large degree upon his rifle. It must be as lightweight and rugged as possible. It must be capable of automatic and semi-automatic fire, and its ammunition must provide maximum firepower with the minimum of weight to enable the rifleman to carry as many loaded magazines as possible and practical. For use in areas where extreme mobility is required and ammunition resupply is difficult, a new rifle has been issued to special forces, airborne and air mobile troops of the Army, and to other military forces of the United States. This new rifle is designated the XM-16E1. The XM-16E1 is a 5.56 millimeter or caliber .223 shoulder weapon. It is magazine-fed, gas-operated, and air-cooled. The magazine capacity is 20 rounds. By closing the bolt and turning the selector lever to semi, the rifle will fire semi-automatically. By turning the selector lever to auto, the rifle will fire full automatic. The cyclic rate of fire is 700 to 800 rounds per minute, with a muzzle velocity of approximately 3,150 feet per second. The maximum effective range is 460 meters. The weapon's most distinguishing characteristic is its light weight. When fully loaded with 20 rounds, this weapon weighs less than 8 pounds. This relationship of weight to firepower in the XM-16E1 results from design, construction, and operation. One of its principal features is straight-line construction. The straight line extends through the stock, bolt carrier group, chamber, and barrel. This design substantially reduces rifle climb during firing. The barrel is surrounded by a heat-resistant fiberglass material with an aluminum reflecting shield which serves as a handguard. Vents along the upper and lower surfaces of the handguard allow for circulation of air around the barrel. The ejection port has a hinged dust cover to prevent foreign matter from entering the chamber through the ejection port. When the weapon is cocked or fired, the dust cover opens automatically for ejection of spent cartridge cases. The carrying handle is an integrated part of the receiver. Due to the straight line construction of this weapon, raised sights are necessary. The rear sight is located on the rear of the carrying handle and is protected by the raised sides of the handle. Additional designs can be seen in this view. One of these is the gas operating system. When a round is fired, gas passes through a gas port located in the front, upper surface of the barrel and is directed through a gas tube back into the cylinder formed by the bolt and bolt carrier, causing the bolt carrier to move rearward. Another design is the chamber locking mechanism. Lugs on the bolt lock the bolt directly to the barrel, thereby eliminating the need for the heavy receiver normally required to lock the bolt behind the cartridge. The stock of the rifle is composed of a durable synthetic material of high impact strength. It contains the recoil mechanism consisting of the action spring guide and action spring. A portion of the recoil is absorbed by buffer rings located on the action spring guide. During recoil, the outer rings are forced to ride over the inner ring. A special feature of the XM-16E1 rifle is the forward assist assembly. 
This permits the rifleman to seat the bolt manually in event it fails to do so automatically. The principal distinctive features of the weapon have been described. Before learning how it functions, we will see how it is used. Using the weapon consists of three functions, loading, firing, and unloading. To load the magazine, remove the empty magazine by pressing the magazine release button located above and forward of the trigger guard. Place a round on top of the magazine follower, nose toward the smooth face of the magazine, and press down. Repeat until 20 rounds have been inserted. Before loading the weapon, place the safety selector lever on safe. With the weapon on safe, insert the loaded magazine into the magazine feedway and push up. A click will be heard when the magazine is properly seated. To release the bolt and chamber the round, pull the charging handle fully to the rear and release, or press the bolt catch. The forward movement of the bolt strips around from the magazine and chambers it. To fire semi-automatically, turn the selector lever to the semi-position. The rifle will then fire around each time the trigger is pressed. To fire automatically, turn the selector lever to the auto position. The rifle will continue to fire automatically as long as the trigger is pressed to the rear or until the magazine is empty. To unload the weapon, first place the selector lever on safe. Remove the magazine by pressing the magazine release button. Remember, the rifle is clear only when the bolt is to the rear. There is no round in the chamber, the magazine is removed, and the selector lever is on safe. Although the configuration of the XM16E1 is distinctive, its cycle of operation and functioning are similar to other military rifles with automatic capabilities. The cycle of functioning of the weapon consists of eight basic mechanical operations. These are firing, unlocking, extracting, ejecting, cocking, feeding, chambering, and locking. Although many of these occur simultaneously, they will be discussed separately for both semi-automatic and automatic fire. Let's start with firing. When a round is in the chamber, the weapon is ready to fire. For semi-automatic fire, the selector lever is turned to the semi position. Assuming that the hammer is in the cocked position to begin with, the firing cycle is initiated by pressing the trigger. The trigger rotates on the trigger pin and disengages from the notch on the bottom of the hammer. The hammer moves forward by action of the hammer spring. It strikes the head of the firing pin and drives it through the face of the bolt into the primer which ignites the powder. The firing section of the rifle is so rapid that it is impossible for the operator to release the trigger fast enough to prevent multiple firing, even if he tried to do so. Therefore, a device is installed in the firing mechanism to permit firing single rounds. In the XM16E1, the disconnect is used for this purpose. The disconnect is rotated forward when the trigger is pulled. When the hammer is cocked by recoil of the bolt carrier, the disconnect engages the lower hook of the hammer and holds it until the trigger is released. When the trigger is released, the disconnect rotates down and disengages the hammer, allowing it to rotate forward until caught by the nose of the trigger. This prevents the hammer from following the bolt carrier forward. In the semi-automatic position, the disconnect governs the firing mechanism to provide a single shot each time the trigger is pulled.
The next three operations in the cycle occur in rapid sequence as an immediate consequence of firing. First of these is unlocking. Before firing, the bolt has been locked into the barrel extension. By alignment of the lugs on the bolt and barrel extension. When the round is fired, gas from the burning powder forces the projectile through the barrel. A small portion of gas enters the gas port in the upper part of the barrel under the front sight. The gas port directs gas into the gas tube, which carries it into the cylinder between the bolt carrier and the bolt, and drives the bolt carrier rearward. During this rearward movement, a cam track on the upper surface of the bolt carrier acts on the bolt cam pin, rotating the cam pin and bolt clockwise until the bolt locking lugs are no longer in line with the barrel extension locking lugs. During unlocking, the firing pin is withdrawn from the face of the bolt by the bolt carrier group. With the bolt unlocked, the next sequence in the cycle of operation occurs. This is extracting. The extractor is contained in the front end of the bolt. It grips the rim of the cartridge and holds it firmly against the face of the bolt. When the bolt carrier and bolt move to the rear, the extractor gripping the cartridge case withdraws it from the chamber. The action of the gas will be repeated. When the round is fired and gas pressure pushes the projectile through the barrel, a small portion of this pressure enters the gas port and passes through the gas tube into the cylinder between the bolt carrier and the bolt. Here, gas drives the bolt carrier rearward, unlocking the bolt and extracting the cartridge case. When the cartridge case is extracted from the chamber, the next operation can occur, ejecting. The bolt contains an ejector and ejector spring which are compressed by the base of the cartridge. When the spent cartridge case is entirely clear of the chamber, the ejector spring forces the ejector forward. This action ejects the cartridge case out of the rifle through the ejection port. With each firing, the bolt carrier and bolt are driven rearward by the force of gas. This rearward movement, in turn, initiates the sequence of unlocking, extracting, and ejecting. During the rearward movement of the bolt carrier group, another action occurs, cocking. As the bolt carrier group moves rearward, it overrides the hammer and forces it down into the receiver, compressing the hammer spring. The lower hook of the hammer is engaged with the disconnect. When the trigger is released, the hammer slips from the disconnect and is caught by the nose of the trigger. The weapon is cocked. Another simultaneous action occurs during the rearward movement of the bolt carrier group. This action is called feeding. As the bolt carrier group clears the top of the magazine and expels the empty cartridge case, a new round is pushed into the path of the bolt by the upward thrust of the magazine follower and spring. The action spring guide, which is pushing on the rear of the bolt carrier group, is forced rearward by the bolt carrier group, compressing the action spring. The bolt carrier group reaches its rearmost position when the rear of the action spring guide contacts the rear of the receiver extension. Now the compressed action spring expands. This drives the action spring guide assembly forward with enough force to drive the bolt carrier group forward toward the chamber. 
This initiates the next action in the cycle of functioning, chambering. As the bolt carrier group moves forward, the face of the bolt strips a new round from the magazine and moves it toward the chamber. As the extractor grips the rim of the cartridge, the ejector and ejector spring are forced back into the bolt by the base of the cartridge as the round is seated in the chamber. Now one final action is required to complete the cycle, locking. The forward movement of the bolt ceases when the bolt locking lugs pass between the barrel extension locking lugs and the round is fully chambered. When the bolt carrier enters the last half inch of its forward movement, the bolt cam pin emerges from the guide channel in the upper receiver, moves along the cam track, rotating the bolt counterclockwise. This locks the bolt to the barrel extension. Locking the bolt completes the cycle of operation. The weapon is ready to be fired again. When the selector lever is on semi-automatic, as it has been during this review of the cycle of functioning, a single round is fired each time the trigger is pressed. When the selector lever is moved to the auto position, the weapon functions in a slightly different manner. Automatic fire begins when the trigger is pressed to release the hammer. The hammer strikes the firing pin and fires the first round. The bolt carrier recoils and moves rearward, overriding the hammer and depressing it to the cocked position. At this time, the center cam of the selector lever prevents the disconnect from engaging the hammer as it does in semi-automatic fire. Simultaneously, another cam on the selector lever rotates the automatic sear forward which catches the upper hook of the hammer. The automatic sear holds the hammer in cocked position until it is struck by a shoulder on the bottom of the bolt carrier. This releases the hammer. As long as the trigger remains depressed, the nose fails to engage the hammer and automatic fire continues until the magazine is empty. However, when the trigger is released during firing, the nose of the trigger moves up, engaging the hammer. The cycle of automatic fire is stopped until the trigger is pressed again. All other operations in automatic fire are the same as in semi-automatic fire. These are firing, unlocking, extracting, ejecting, cocking, feeding, chambering, and locking. These separate but interrelated operations complete the cycle of functioning of the XM16E1 rifle. Remember, the XM16E1 is a gas-operated, air-cooled, shoulder-fired weapon capable of semi-automatic or automatic fire. It fires 5.56 millimeter ammunition fed from a 20-round magazine. The weight of the loaded aluminum magazine is 7 tenths of a pound. The weight of the loaded weapon is 7.6 pounds. Its maximum effective range is 460 meters. The straight line construction helps to assure accuracy of fire by reducing muzzle climb. In military situations requiring a high degree of individual mobility together with the most possible small arms firepower per man, the XM-16E1 rifle has proved its value.